still a third Welcome back, you're listening to Tunis International Radio and now we all talk about a different topic and over the phone we have with us Neira Albay. Neira, welcome to FTC. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hi, so, thank Neira, you. tell us about what happened. So um, I was there um, in the first day of uh, manifestation, mm-hmm. okay, protest. Uh, I went there on uh, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was there um, at, let's say, um, midday. Mm-hmm. Okay, and there were many... Uh, teachers, professors of university mm-hmm. gathering in Bardo. Yeah. And of course there were many slogans of uh, anti-niqab and uh, anti-dictatorship in universities and mm-hmm. anti-violence. So I think um, it's a good initiative to uh, protest and to express our opinions concerning this subject. But why did you go in Naira? Because uh, I personally think that um, I don't accept mm-hmm. uh, teaching uh, people wearing this, uh, I mean, this type of clothing. Are you talking to about me, only teaching or about the exam itself? Exam, teaching, everything. Everything really? concerned, yes. Mm-hmm. So could you, could you explain? Yeah, of course I can explain. So I think that, um, socially speaking, mm-hmm. maybe these people can uh, be accepted mm-hmm. um, in society. I mean, they, they are free to wear that type of clothing, mm-hmm. okay? But uh, when we move now to institution, educational institution, universities, mm-hmm. maybe high school in the future, I don't know, we cannot tolerate uh, that kind of clothing because as a teacher, I'm, I'm talking about myself, I cannot communicate and teach somebody who is totally uh, unknown to me. Mm-hmm. I cannot, uh, for example, see her face. I cannot recognize her. Mm-hmm. Okay, and who tells me that this person behind this veil is a woman or is a man? Mm-hmm. So for me, it's something that we cannot tolerate. Do you have students with niqab at your university? No, hopefully we don't have. We so have you don't we have, have the problem veiled, at all. Veiled, uh, ladies and uh, I'm not against uh, teaching veiled ladies because I respect them, I respect their choice of wearing the veil and mm-hmm. I appreciate, um, I, mean, I mean, I appreciate teaching them because uh, they are uh, open-minded and uh, I mean, we, um, we had a good relationship with these ladies, okay, since, of course, their uh, faces are, um, I mean, si- since we can... Mm-hmm. Later, um, what about the demonstrators in front of the Constituent Assembly? Do you think they have reached their goals? hope so. Um, I mean, right right now, um, they are, I mean, they are ongoing uh, procedure. Mm-hmm. But think, things are not finalized at the end. Which procedure? Where Could you be, p- be precise? Yes, procedure, uh, I mean, uh, strike. Legal, or uh, you're talking about the strike? Strike. Uh-huh, yeah. okay. I'm talking about the strike in Bardo. Mm-hmm. They are not finalized. We are still waiting for where it's going or is going to um, to happen in the future, maybe next week or in Tunisia. Now, um, they want to impose their identity, their marginalized identity, and they ha- have the right, total right, to speak and uh, to, to voice themselves. But I think that, my opinion is that now, right, I mean, uh, talking about Today, in Tunisia, we have bigger problems than talking about Islamism Mm -hmm. um, in uh, Tunisia. We have, for example, the problem of unemployment that Mm -hmm. we have to deal with, to face to face it, really, we, we, we deal with uh, many people searching, applying for jobs without any response. And uh, this, this is the first problem. The second problem is our economy, economy in Tunisia. We have to boost it, yeah. plus the agriculture. So we, there are um, serious problems, mm-hmm. apart from uh, the problem of niqab. And I think that we should focus, centralize our uh, attention to these bigger uh, problems. Of right. course, give the floor yeah. to these people to talk about and express themselves, but we need to, fo- to focalize on these uh, bigger problems. 
and uh, maybe we'll have you once uh, one day here in the studio to talk about the uh, the problems of education in uh, in uh, okay. Tunisia. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a real pleasure. Thank you're you welcome. very much. You're welcome. Our next bye track, bye. and we'll be back. Bye bye. Ciao. When you see a student with a niqab, do you accept that or not? And here, it's 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 not our opinion. So we are just asking questions and waiting for feedback. Yeah, uh, well, pedagogically speaking, uh, we cannot teach someone uh, we're not sure about his identity. We, we're not sure whether he's a woman, a man, a terrorist. <laughs> Uh, if we allow an account, for example, during the exams, it mm -hmm. will be so easy then. And uh, apart from this, uh, I believe that those trivial issues are made on purpose mm -hmm. to distract us from the real matters, the urgent ones. I don't know. This reminded me, by the way, of uh, controversial debates about the national identity in France. Yeah. Remember that? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, we have had the same debate here in Tunisia. Yeah, see, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's made up uh, to stir like um, anti, uh, in France, this is, I'm talking about uh, in France, uh, it was intended to uh, stir up entire immigrant sentiment ahead of the elections this mm -hmm. time. And these debates on uh, the burqa, um, it's it's part of the government's maneuvers to distract the people uh, and just manipulate three, four, minds. Or, or maybe um, less than, than, than 60 all over the country. What do you think? Yeah, this is why I'm saying this is a trivial issue. Because uh -huh. they're a minority, after all. So if they, they're willing to show their faces um, to any uh, administrator or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. uh, before sitting for the exam, the way, I love one of my that. colleagues' banners. Uh, saying, uh, you trust us for your minds. How can you not trust us for your faces? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, yeah. We're yeah. willing to, um, to mm -hmm. find a way to, you know, they're a minority, so they have the right to uh, attend courses and, of course, sit for exams. So. Mm. Oh. Jihan, thank you very Jihan, much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> And over the phone we have with us Madame Mahfouz, who will tell us more about this issue of Niqab at university. Uh, Madame Mahfouz, welcome to RTCI. Hello. Hello. Hello, hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are so, you? So, welcome to RTCI, Madame Mahfouz. Thank you, thank you. So, um, could you shed light on uh, this issue of Niqab at university? Uh, okay, first, uh, I, I find that um, not trivial. Like uh, like what uh, had been said earlier, uh -huh. I found that a, a bit shameful to um, to uh, I mean to be concentrated on such issues now. Uh -huh. But at the same time, you cannot blame these people because I think they think that it's now or never. Um, mm -hmm. it's true that employment and all uh, and all the other issues are. Uh, much more important than uh, than these issues. Mm -hmm. That uh, if anybody else um, had experienced the fact of being, uh, um, uh, I mean, of not having or or not being allowed to sit for exams because they were wearing the veil before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they have the same feeling now with me up. Do you think it's okay? the same? Uh, I think they have the same feeling as we had uh, before because I. Personally, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was not allowed to sit for exams wearing the veil, mm -hmm. and that feeling is very, very bad and terrible, uh, especially if you are living in a Muslim uh, society, in a Muslim country. You see, yeah. And, uh, my opinion about the uh, app, you know, was not well stated. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just explain. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm for, you know, I respect anybody's choice, uh, but there is one thing to be mentioned here. Um, I'm saying that a woman who chooses to wear niqab, you know, uh, I, I think she should assume her responsibility because wearing niqab, you know, it's, uh, it's very, very important here. I'm not saying that it's obligatory or, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's religious. We're just trying to provide a balanced a woman opinion. To take the decision to wear the niqab, it's very, very important, you know, mm -hmm. and delicate, because it's not an easy decision, you know. Mm -hmm. You're going to be covered, nobody mm -hmm. will know you, mm -hmm. whosoever, you know. But for these uh, these uh, colleagues here, or um, these women who have uh, chosen to wear the niqab, I think that uh, they, they should 
choose to stay at home uh, as well, you know, because, uh, you know, our universities are mixed. Mm -hmm. uh, so normally they are not allowed to get mixed with men and so on, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm trying to analyze their ideology now. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, part, uh, I'm not uh, saying that it's a minor issue, mm -hmm. but there are uh, other issues that are that are much. In, uh, I mean, that are more important than this. Right. You know? Some people would say that uh, all issues are important, even this Pardon? issue. Some people would claim that all issues are important, even this issue of freedom of the public universe. I told you. I told you. Yes, I told you that this. Uh, is, uh, you know, it's now or never. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not go going to have my chance now, later I won't. Mm -hmm. And I. And they're feeling completely, you know, but it's, I think they are mistaken because um, they don't have the right to stop the exams. Other people who are not interested in Iqal sure. or other issues yeah. have the right to sit for their exam. As a teacher, I, I found the difficulty on supervising girls wearing the veil yeah. because mm -hmm. they can put headphones, let mm -hmm. alone the niqab. So I think sitting mm -hmm. for the exam with the niqab is absolutely, you know, uh, wrong. Uh, but as a solution, maybe they can provide, um, you know, a class with with women only, mm -hmm. uh, where a teacher with a woman would supervise them. Do you think and, this is technically uh, possible here in Tunisia? Not now, not right now. That's why I find I find these sit-ins and uh, all this stuff. Sixty I years know. after the independence, do you think it's possible today to to have why a separate not? room for uh, for uh, ladies? I'm, I'm just why asking. Not? You know, this is not my opinion. Yeah. I'm just asking. Could you explain to us? Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to say something about the word that, that has been said, marginalized identities. I don't think uh -huh. that they are marginalized. They are Tunisians. Mm -hmm. They live in Tunisia, and they are not a minority. Many of them are wearing the niqab, but they have chosen to stop education because they didn't find, you know, the conditions that mm -hmm. uh, that can help them uh, carry on their their education uh, with while wearing the niqab. See, so they have taken this decision uh, despite the fact that they uh, they would have loved to carry on uh, their studies. You know, the conditions of not having the right to wear the niqab uh, in exams and all that mm -hmm. have deprived them of this right. What I, what I think uh, would be possible, but not right now, mm -hmm. when I say we are in a state of transition, mm -hmm. the state would, ha would take the, enough time mm -hmm. to provide solutions for long-term, I mean long-term solutions, uh, where probably, probably, I'm not saying that this will happen, but probably we would have classes where women would be separated from men, you know, but for these... For the but, but excuse me, do, do you think this is um, possible in our universities?